What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Tuesday, May 7th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Let's face it, there are a lot of viruses out there, and each of them carry a health risk and threat to you. And we try and keep you informed about what is going around and what is going on in the world of viruses. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe down below. If you want to help keep more people safe, by all means, share these videos with anyone you know. Give this a thumbs up by pressing that thumbs up button down there. That's telling YouTube that you like the content and it helps spread my content more throughout the algorithm. Let's try for over 100 likes today and see what that does in the algorithm. If you have anything to say, a comment, or maybe something that's going on with you right now, maybe you know someone who's sick or something, or a comment on something you see today, leave a comment down below. All right, we do have a few news stories today. Um, we also are going to take a look at some of our daily data, and we're going to do our assessment of hospital capacity. I do have a list here of some states that are seeing over 80% of their patient beds being used, and one state that, well, I shouldn't say it's a state, it's not a state, one place that we have not talked about in quite some time that has an issue going on with ICU capacity. Yes, so let's get started, shall we? Rihanna misses 2024 Met Gala after reportedly coming down with the flu. All right, we've been hearing about flu from time to time quite a bit lately, actually. Uh, we heard about it over the weekend with, I believe it was Nick Jonas of the Jonas Brothers, said to have uh, influenza. And then, if you recall, going back eh, maybe over a month ago now, and not just once, but several times, the Pope was um, said to have had the flu. I mean, flu can go around now that we're into spring. It can. It doesn't go around as much as it does in the wintertime. And we'll have to see. This is the latest person now to say they have the flu. And I've been seeing other people saying, not celebrities, just regular people saying, I've come down with the flu now. Even though, when we take a look at the CDC flu map, and let's do that, you see here, it's a sea of green. Now, I am told if there is an outbreak of influenza A, it doesn't always know necessarily uh, show up here on this map as well so i don't know but uh flu we're starting to hear about it more and more as we all know h5n1 is a thing but there's only one human reported case in the united states so far this year speaking of h5n1 listen to this this is coming from the daily mail in uh, uk this is a uh, news website cdc admits bird flu has pandemic potential as study shows h5n1 virus has mutated 300 times to become more infectious and resistant to drugs and we do know it can be resistant to drugs again around the world over the years there have not been a lot of human cases and because of that therefore so far it does show a high death rate if it should start spreading human to human, which we hope it doesn't, that death rate would likely come down. But again, I mean, if it is resistant to drugs, yes, it may come down. But the question is, how much would it come down? I mean, it's concerning. We hope this never spreads to uh, humans and becomes a human to human thing. We don't want that to happen whatsoever. And it says mutations were revealed in a USDA study involving 26 infected dairy herds. Researchers also warned there were signs that the virus was adapting to mammals. And yes, we've seen several different mammals, animals that have had uh, cases of bird flu last year. I think we saw foxes. There are a whole bunch. You can actually pull up the list. Maybe one of these days we will revisit that list from last year. So far this year, I've heard about cows and cats. Maybe there were others. I haven't heard about any others. All right, moving on. Let's uh, hop on a plane. Well, let's travel over to Australia for a moment. Just going to read a headline here. You can read this full story if you want to. I'll make sure I have it retweeted or tweeted out. I think I already shared it, but I'll go back and double check after I'm done here. Hundreds of patients died after catching COVID in Victorian hospitals. New data shows. So, yeah, hospital-inquired infection. It is something that we have known about for some time. It's something that is not good, and it's, it's relatively concerning. 
All right, moving on to this now. And for this one, I actually had to look up the disease because I um, haven't heard about it in a while. Quite frankly, I forgot about it. Extremely contagious illness now spreading in Michigan schools. And you really have to scroll down to find out what that is. But let's read some of this article. While we're out of the colder months in Michigan and seeing fewer cases of illness such as the flu, springtime brings a rise in other sicknesses such as the common cold, sinus infection, allergies, and one highly contagious disease is now affecting school-aged children to be aware of in Michigan. And you're probably thinking, oh, that's got to be COVID. Huh? Follow along here. Coming down here, it says, extremely contagious illness spreading in Michigan schools. Well, I had to... Uh, read through this whole thing and eventually find out just what that is and what they are referring to is something called HFMD hand foot and mouth disease I actually had to look that up because I forgot what is HFMD then it's oh yeah that's right we've heard about that before but I don't ever recall mentioning it here on the channel and it says the highly contagious illness primarily spreads quickly among young children due to the proximity of students in classrooms and on playgrounds. Kids under the age 7 are most at risk for HFMD. And here's what some of the symptoms include. Fever, sore throat, feeling sick, a rash of small blisters on the hands, feet, and inside the mouth. Yikes, ooh, that sounds terrifying. Fussiness in infants and toddlers, and loss of appetite. So, yes, hand, foot, and mouth disease. Have we ever mentioned it here on the channel before? If anyone knows, hey, let me know. I'm not going to go back through all of my videos. We have, what, over 700 now? I don't recall ever mentioning it before. All right, taking a look now at today's allergy levels, let's refresh this. Yesterday, 40% of the country was in medium status for pollen. Today, 38% is in medium or higher, but you will notice two things that are very distinct. One, the northeast is in a sea of red today. It's really high pollen levels, plus portions of the plains today are in high pollen levels. Taking a look now at what is going on with air quality values around the United States, generally east of the Mississippi, and we'll say, yeah, east of the Mississippi is seeing moderate levels. Texas, on the other hand, is seeing a lot of orange and red. That is not good. There's high humidity High moisture content in the air, but there's got to be something else going on. I mean, Houston. Wow. Houston area. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of 100s. Uh, Mounts near 150. But you get up into Pennsylvania. You go north of Pennsylvania. Not doing all that bad. But from about Interstate 80 southward in Pennsylvania, yes, you do run into some problems. Baltimore and lower Susquehanna Valley in Pennsylvania. Seeing some moderate levels today as well. The West Coast actually is doing better than what we have seen in some time. Taking a look at what is going on with Philadelphia EMS calls yesterday, 872 EMS incidents. That is not good. That's well over 800. Live looking at Montgomery County, you can see not terribly busy right now. Same thing can be said with Chester County. Let me refresh this. Just three calls on a weekday at this time. That's actually fantastic. Taking a look at Walgreens, we're not going to do any states on Walgreens today because we've got to get the hospital capacity. Uh, national positivity trend is 14%. Prior week is 12.6%. That's a difference of up 1.3%. Total test, 3,763. The prior week was 3,941. I did want to quickly look at two wastewater sites, one which I did already plan out in advance, and the other will just randomly pick a wastewater site. Take a look at COVID. This is University Park, Pennsylvania, State College. Only 16,000 population. There is on a CDC site another site that's higher, but there's a reason why we're looking at this. COVID dropping at this time. RSV is flat. Influenza A, now it's calculating it as high, and it is starting to see an increase. That is something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Kind of unusual for this time of year. They did just have graduation up at Penn State, but again, influenza A is rising at this time. We'll have to see if that uh, continues or not. University Park's population will actually decrease a little bit uh, coming up soon as Penn State College, Penn State University College students will be done for the summer. There is summer courses up there, but it's nowhere near the size population of the regular 
semesters. Take a look at influenza B is dropping, HMPV is dropping, norovirus also starting to see a rise in the Center County State College area, we'll say University Park, because Center County actually has a uh, well over 100,000 population. I think it's over 150,000. And let's find another wastewater site. How about we come down here and revisit Texas? I think this is a good idea. Let's go to the northern Amarillo, Texas site. And I looked at this yesterday. Some good news here. COVID is low. RSV is low. Influenza A, remember that big rise? It has now dropped. Influenza B is flat at this time. HMPV is low. Norovirus, it's saying high. I would say it's definitely near moderate. It's slowly rising once again. And Mpox, there was one detection. Hepatitis A, no I just one issue back on April 5th. Now let's do our assessment of hospital occupancy and capacity at this time. And for the most part, everything's the same. There are a few changes and a few additions. Mostly, of uh, most of these states that I have here that have uh, hospital capacity issues, it does include inpatient beds and ICU beds. I don't have any state that's on there just for ICU, although we do have one place, which is not a state. Whether you want to call it a state or not, or whether you think it should be a state, that's up to you to decide. And somewhere we have not mentioned in quite some time, but they are having an ICU issue. Yeah, that's their issue. So let's start off at the national level here. 74.9% of all beds are being used. That's down a little bit. 0.7% is for COVID. Influenza makes up 0.3% of that. ICU usage is at 69.2%. 0.6% for COVID. Influenza is at 0.4% at this time. And our first state is none other than Maryland. Maryland made the list last week, and it stays on the list this week. Now, they're not having an ICU issue. 67.3% of ICU beds are being used. 0.9% for COVID. 0.3% for influenza. When we come to inpatient beds, here you go. It did drop from last week, so that's encouraging. 82.7% of beds are being used, 0.9% for COVID, 0.2% for influenza. Next comes Massachusetts, which has been having problems for quite some time. And in Massachusetts, 86.1% of beds are being used, 0.8% for COVID, 0.5% for influenza. And in their ICU situation, that is over 80% as well. 80.5% of beds are being used in the ICU, 0.7% for COVID, 0.6% for influenza. Missouri, or excuse me, Minnesota comes up next. Then we get to Missouri. Minnesota, your ICU uh, situation has improved. 73.9% of ICU beds are being used, 0.4% for COVID, 0.4% for influenza. However, your inpatient bed use, it's still there, just barely over 80%, 80.6%. And uh, COVID makes up 0.6% of that. Influenza makes up 0.4% of that. Hopefully next week we can say Minnesota is no longer on the list. Missouri, you continue to make the list and your situation actually got a little worse. 84.5% of all inpatient beds are being used. 1% is for COVID. 0.5% is for influenza. Your ICU situation also got a little worse. 81.9% of beds being used. 1% for COVID and 0.5% for influenza. Next, we go up to Rhode Island, which has been continuing to have all sorts of problems. Rhode Island continues to have ICU uses at 85.1%, 0.4% for COVID, 0.9% for influenza. And when we take a look at inpatient bed usage, that is at 87%, 0.6% for COVID, 0.8% for influenza. Next, we come down to Texas. Yes, Texas makes the list. And I'll show you why. It's just barely under 80%. 79.9%. It's 0 0.1, 0.01% higher. You get the deal. Um, I said, you know what? This needs to be added this week. Uh, COVID usage is still at 1%. And when we take a look at influenza, it's 0.3%. ICU usage, however, yeah, that is over. Uh, 80%. So I was wrong. There was one state that does have ICU usage over 80%. Oh, wow. And not inpatient bed usage. It's at 81.5%. COVID-19, 1% uh, of that. And 0.3% for influenza. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, Texas, yeah, you do have a problem with your ICU usage. Again, not all states actually uh, consider it a problem over 80%. It's just a benchmark level that I like to uh, consider to be problematic. 
79.4% of all ICU beds in the state of Washington are currently being used. 0.7% is for COVID-19. 0.3% is for influenza. Inpatient bed usage at this time is at 84%. And COVID-19 makes up 0.8% of that. Influenza makes up 0.2% of that. Now, in terms of states, the best state is continuing to be Wyoming, where your capacity actually got even better. You're only using... 43.4% of your beds, 0.2% for COVID, 0.1% for influenza. ICU usage at this time, really low, 38.6%, 0.1% for COVID, 0.0% for influenza. And now what's that place we have not talked about in a while? It is Puerto Rico. You do have an ICU issue that is starting to develop. 80.6% of your ICU beds are being used, 0.3% for COVID, 0.4% for influenza, and when we take a look at your bed usage, that's a different story. 70.5% being used, 0.3% for COVID, 0.5% for influenza. Alrighty folks, that does it for this week's hospital capacity check. Let's take a look at some uh, data from the CDC real quickly. Then we will move on to some state data, and we can see here from the CDC, 5,098 hospital admissions in the past week. That's down by 11.1%, and the latest variants of COVID, as you can see here, that KP.2 is now at 24.9%, and JN.1 now trails behind at 22%. All right, moving on to New Jersey, but before we get to New Jersey, we have to take a look at this, a new story I found about New Jersey. New Jersey stats, COVID still killing people weekly. And by that, through early May, according to the Department of Health Statistics, New Jersey has already recorded 333 confirmed and probable COVID-associated deaths so far in 2024. So now we know there have already been 333 COVID deaths in New Jersey this year, 69 out of 70 hospitals reporting, 175 hospitalizations in New Jersey, four people on a ventilator, 19 people in the ICU. That ventilator uh, number is actually up a little bit, I believe, and discharges at this time is 13. All right, moving on to New York State now. 338 people tested positive, and the number of people in the hospital in New York State did increase slightly to 437 and 35 people in the ICU. The ICU number is actually down, but again, 437, that's an increase from 419. It's not a significant increase, but an increase is an increase. And so far, we're not seeing signs that a major wave is developing. We're seeing signs of bouncing off the bottom, just a little bump in the road because of the KP.2 variant. All right, folks, that does it for today's update. We'll have more news and state reports tomorrow. I hope you've enjoyed this update. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have decided, you know what, this is really informative and it does help me out, I'm going to subscribe down below. Well, do that. Subscribe down below. And if you feel more people need to be protected, stay safe and informed, share this with anyone you know. And of course, leave a comment if you have something to say down below. Maybe I got something wrong. Maybe my benchmark of 80% for hospitalizations, maybe it should be a little higher. I don't know, but if you have anything to say, say it down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for watching. Take care.